Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our StoryFest 2022 finale. My name, yeah, a little clapping, that'd be awesome, thank you. My name is Alex Giannini, and I'm the Associate Program Director here at the Westport Library. Uh, and before I start, and I'll be super quick, but before I start, I wanted to mention that last night, the library's own Carrie Garluck delivered what was, without a doubt, the best introduction in StoryFest history. And if you were here, you know what I'm talking about. But she made not one, but both of our guests cry before they even made it to the stage. <laughs> so what followed, though, was a conversation between two friends that was emotional and wonderful and real. It lent an air of magic to the evening, and that magic has carried through all day today through incredible panels with brilliant and kind people. StoryFest, as we like to say, is a celebration of reading, writing, ideas, and community. As such, I cannot think of a more fitting way to close out the 2022 edition of this festival than with the Reading Glasses podcast. Every week, hosts Mallory O'Mara and Bria Grant do exactly what this festival tries so hard each year to do. They bring community together through a shared love of reading. And with that, please help me in welcoming Bria Grant and, thanks to a minor story fest miracle, Mallory O'Mara. Uh, oh. Wrong one. You're supposed to get the one on the... Oh, yep. <laughs> it's fine. We're wasted. You didn't Just think kidding. we'd do this without slide whistles, did you? Wait, I thought it'd be cool if we walked up to the front and did like a high five, like a... Hey, we did it. We did it! Woo! Woo, woo, woo! I'm Bria Grant. I'm Mallory O'Mara. Um, We're doing this hey, backwards. Everybody. Um, what? We're doing this backwards. I'm Mallory O'Mara, and then you're yeah, I'm Grant. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what, what I wanted to do, I wanted you to tell people what it took for you to get here. Because <laughs> it's really wild. I have come through a wildfire, yeah. a hurricane, 10 hours at an airport, and uh, a guy you. watching a Marvel movie really loudly behind me in my seat. Uh, you know what? Can we make a rule? You cannot have the volume on. He, no, no, no. In a plane. He, no, he, the Marvel movie wasn't loud. He was watching oh. it loudly. <laughs> He was like, they can't kill that guy. <laughs> you know what? That I'm interested in. I am interested in his commentary. But you know what? I still read two books on that flight. Hey, you know. So if you were in the audience and you're like, hey, I came to StoryFest and I just stuck around for this thing and who are these two weird women <laughs> on this I'm stage? I'm sorry. First of all, I'm sorry about for what you're about to watch. I hope you like slide whistles. <laughs> Uh, we are Reading Glasses. We are a podcast that happens every Thursday, brought to you by Maximum Fun. And we like to say that we are a book show that doesn't talk about books. Uh, we are... <laughs> Sorry, we like show... to define ourselves in the negative. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we talk more about book culture and literary life, and we are really, really excited. This is a special episode because I can't swear. <laughs> uh, no, this is our fir very first live episode If you swear, ever. I am going to do the side whistle, just so you know. <laughs> is that to gonna... bleep me out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very funny. You can't swear in this live... Look around, you can't swear in this live. I know, you can't. It's too fancy. I mean, there's a 3D printer. It'll be you offended. Uh, too fancy. <laughs> Uh, well, before we call on our truly incredible champions of all Glasser favorites, yes. authors that we're going to bring up and uh, talk with you, for mm. you, talk to, for you, mm. tonight, <laughs> we're going to start uh, how we start all our episodes. Bria, what are you reading? Uh, um, uh, I started reading, I actually texted you about this. I'm reading the doc, the, no, the daughter of Dr. Dr. Moreau, Moreau, the oh, new Sylvia so Maria good. Garcia. That's good, that's next it's to my It's great, I'm about, I'm about maybe halfway through. It's sort of a retelling, I would say. Mm -hmm. We like to describe the books for people who haven't heard us before. We like to tell each other what these books are about and get each other excited about them. The funny it's, thing is, because this is how Brie and I's friendship really is. So uh, we just yeah, thought, why not bring it to the world? Yes. <laughs> We were those people who were like, we should do a podcast. And then we started doing a podcast, and now In we've been doing defense, it for five years. We did not suggest it. It was our friend Jason. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, anyway, it's sort of a retelling about the daughter. Have you read this yet? No. Okay. I, I um, have it. You texted me before you read it, and you were like, have you read this yet? Yeah, yeah. Um, it is sort of, it's, it's sort of a retelling about, the, about Dr. Mar 
Moreau, who I don't know that much Not about. Not a great guy, turns out. No, no. <laughs> um, and, but it's about his daughter. Mallory, I have to tell you, I'm not sure you can read it. Close Snakes. your ears if you hate Snakes. spoilers. If you're a Mallory, there is a love triangle. Oh, I, I think I was I'm like, not sure. What I think there's going to be a triangle shaped like a triangle. I'm sorry, it's not a snake. Although it is in the jungle area, so I feel like it could be. I, um, I think love triangles don't count if they're like beast people. I think that's like a, there's not everyone in the book is a beast person. Damn it, okay. <laughs> Only certain people. The daughter is not as of yet. I haven't. I, God, I'm sorry. If you've read this book, everyone's yelling at me, and they're like, this "Who knows what this could happen?" About. Um, but it's about it's it's about the daughter, and um, she's been living there with Dr. Moreau, and then there's like a man who comes to live there to help with these hybrids. They're not called beast people. And, we have to be um, sensitive. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> and uh, that's about as far as I am. Not very far. Um, what are you reading, Mallory? Well, normally I talk about a book that I am reading, but because I traveled here from far beyond, far, uh, far I'm going to talk away. about a book. One of the books I read on the plane, the author is here, perhaps. It's called the... Raise your hand if you're an author. Raise your hand if you're an author. Uh, it's either, it's this, The Thing Between Us or That Thing. I think it's this, The Thing Between Us, yeah, by Gus Moreno. It emotionally ruined me. Uh, oh, and it is my... Right there, right one, in the front row. Oh, shit. Oh, hey, there we go. Oh, crap. I wasn't supposed to swear. Uh, I made it two minutes. <laughs> um. <laughs> so loud. I was too excited. Hold on. Let me try it again. <laughs> oh, God. I shouldn't have had a margarita. Um, it. <laughs> it's water. Is so I'll give you all three guesses as to what this book is about. Can anyone in the audience <laughs> yell out what they think this book that I love is about? Oh. This person. Yes, isn't. it's a haunted house book. Ah, uh, yes, haunted house. It is so good. It's about this couple who moves into a new house because we all know how great that is for uh, for books. New couples love moving into a new house <laughs> just to test the relationship. And have creepy things happen. So they move into this condo that has been rehabbed. A woman, they find out like a woman had been kicked out for them to, to get into it. And some creepy things start happening. And of it's like their version, this book's version of an Alexa starts doing weird things and ordering things. Oh, crap. Are there children here? <laughs> oh. It's fine. Yep, I see it's, one. It's raised your hands. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Like, uh, it just starts ordering weird things, some creepy things, like industrial strength lie. And uh, I, oh. I don't want to spoil too much, but it progresses from there. It is so scary. It is the one and only book I've been glad that I read on a plane. No one's ever happy to be on a plane. Mm. But I was like, man, I am so glad that I'm on a plane and there's the Marvel guy behind me and there's some lady snoring behind me because it was so scary. It, I could not stop reading it. I say I read it in one sitting, but like, what else was I going to do? I was on a plane. <laughs> but it truly, absolutely blew me out of the water. So, so, so good. So great for spooky season. Speaking of spooky season. Oh, wow. What a good transition. Oh, thank you. you know, we, we don't do live shows, so this is we, that's our know, first ever. Gonna, wow, what an experiment. I'm glad you're all here for this experiment. Let's see how it goes. Um, we have some chairs. We can yep. sit. We're gonna sit down in a second. We so wanted you to see our pants first. <laughs> we do have. We we so you know we, we, have legs we wear them today. so rarely yeah. that we're so excited to show people. Uh, it is spooky season, as far as as far as I'm concerned. It's spooky season, and we have an incredible lineup of some of our absolute favorite spooky authors here, and we have a spooky themed episode for you that is tailored for both horror fanatics and Halloweenies, people who, so if you are like, oh my god, no, I'm so scared of horror, don't worry, this is also tailored for you. It is people from, ready for people from all over the horror spectrum, and we're going to bring everyone up right now. That's your cue. Come on, wonderful come on, people come on. that we Are you going to say people's names? Or are you just going to let everybody guess? All right, everyone. Oh, we're going to have everybody introduce themselves. That's what we're doing. Okay. Sit wherever you want. Grab a microphone. Grab a microphone. Grab a liquid You probably liquid death. recognize Not some of these people. Sponsor. You all have heard their names many, many times on Reading Glasses. And uh, so what we're going to do is everyone's, we're going to go down the row. Please introduce yourselves one by one. And then we are going to uh, solve some reading with problems your own liquid is death. what we're going to do. <laughs> Oh, sorry, Clay. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, go. Rachel, you're ready. Oh, tell, tell people who you are. Hi, I'm Rachel Harrison. Are you going to say what? Wait, what did you say? What Are they going to say what they're reading? Or what are we? What is the oh, no, prompt? Just, 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 just a name. To introduce yourselves. OK. Oh, I'm Alma Katsu. I'm filling in for Alexis Henderson. Yeah, so I'm but, Alexis Henderson. <laughs> but what a, what a Listen, get. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Clay McLeod Chapman. 
Hi, I'm Paul Tremblay, filling in for Paul Tremblay. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Graham Jones. Yeah, so you, have, again, have all heard all of these names. These are some of our absolute favorite writers. We talk about their books and recommend them. We have retired a few of them because we've recommended them so much. No offense to y'all. This is something we have to do because sometimes we're like... We recommend uh, the book We say, much. like, you should read The Only Good Indians like 40 times in a row, and I then we go... I think we've retired a book from each I, one of these Probably authors. so, and we're sorry, but we had to do it because otherwise people get bored with us and they won't listen to the podcast anymore, and, you know... What are you going to do? We've got to feed the fans. <laughs> All right, so, so one of the things that we get asked the most on the show, we get a lot of fan mail, um, some not fan mail, which I delete. Mallory, uh, Mallory don't get into it. <laughs> I won't get into it now. I'm not going to drink the rest of this margarita. Uh, one of the things, one of the things get, people get mad about is that she cusses, and now that child back there is going to write a little email about <laughs> Mallory cussing in the beautiful, beautiful Westport library. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. Uh, but one of the things that we get asked the most, that we get a lot of fan mail about, is from people who are hardcore horror readers. They love reading horror, and they read as much as they can, but they, it's never enough. Maybe we've all had this feeling where it's never scary enough for you. So we're going to solve the reader problem. When you are reading a horror book, not as a writer now, we're all talking readers, how do you enhance your horror experience? Do you read it in a graveyard? Do you set yourself on fire first? Do you maybe make a blood sacrifice beforehand just in case? How do you increase the scariness of a, a horror book? And no one has to answer in order. This is, can be a conversation. You don't have to go down the line. Free for all. We're gonna, we can talk about our tips. My tip is always to... Um, listen to a horror score when you're doing it. Because uh, when you are watching a horror movie, you're not often aware of how much of the scariness that you're feeling is from the music and the sound design. Um, I, I told the story in the show, but I made the terrible mistake of reading Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey, who is going to be here with us virtually. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, actually, can we cue that, Sarah? Well, not now, though. No, they're, they're introducing themselves. Oh, they're themselves. introducing themselves. Can we cue, cue Sarah? Sarah oh. Gailey. Oh. That's on it's like... Uh, it's like they're here, but so what my are your beloved friend. For increasing the spooky atmosphere before oh, wait, no. reading the oh. word. Oh, wait, no. I guess we did. <laughs> I'm a liar. No, okay, I have two suggestions, one wait. of which is general and one of which is oh. based on personal experience. Okay, I guess we're um, My general way. suggestion is to make yourself as vulnerable as possible. Okay. I love reading horror novels in the bathtub because very often in a horror novel, there is a scene where someone is in some kind of vulnerable situation that turns very scary either connected to water or connected to bathing. Um, I love reading with my back to a door because I can get that real prickly back of the neck feeling of I don't know who's behind me. Um, obviously reading horror novels at night is a real primo move for getting spooked. And then my kind of very personal experience-based recommendation is to is read sick. horror novels when you're in situations with friends who you're very comfortable with, who know that you're reading something scary. Um, my number one favorite move that I've ever pulled is giving a friend a very scary book while we were at a cabin in the woods together. And knowing the book ahead of time, I knew when they were getting about to a very scary, like jump scare in the book. And just coming up behind them and giving a little fingernails on the window pane, you can nope. really make your Friendship canceled. experience of a book a community would uh, endeavor if you allow yourself to be that kind of vulnerable around other people who have your best interests at heart ultimately, but aren't afraid to interfere with your mental stability a little bit. Sarah, you're an evil genius and I love Can you. we pause it here? Can we do a pause? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Get, and get, let our panel, panel discuss. What do you so think, what, panel? How, how do you guys get, get spooked? Scarier? How do you spook yourselves? Oh, man, I mean, I have the other problem. Like, I get spooked very easily. Like. I mean, I'm a, a big scaredy cat, so I don't I don't have to work to, to scare myself. So I don't have to come uh, up behind you and touch you on the back of the neck while you're no, reading? No. In fact, like, to go back to what you guys were talking about earlier, I'm totally convinced that one of us five are going to die at the end of this, be retired, <laughs> based on what you were talking about. We've retired you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What scares you, Paul? Oh, I mean, I mean, I'm still terrified of the dark. Like, if no, if I'm the only person home in the house, like, I won't, I oh, can't same. read horror before I go to bed. If I'm going to sleep alone in the house, I, I just can't do it. Same. So when I start watching yeah. reality TV, I'm like, I guess I'm watching Great Great British Baking Show again because <laughs> I can't. I'm well, too scared. Alma, you had a really good tip about um, finding finding a particular type of book that we were talking about over not margaritas. Oh my God, my brain just went completely blank. Well. 
because one of the things we've discussed is, and this is terrible, but I have admitted this quite a bit. Some of you guys know that I used to be an analyst at CIA. And one She's of the not things- dying here. What? <laughs> Wait, what? You yeah. didn't know this? No, no, no. She could murder all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and no one would ever know. This is wild. How long ago? Uh, I retired five years ago. Wow, that's very so, recent. Yeah, so, so she says. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm retired. Ho oh, wink. But for part of that time in the 90s, I worked, I studied, I was an analyst, genocides and mass atrocities. So when you do that, you pretty much lose your ability to be scared. And um, so people find it really funny that I'm a horror writer. And I moved to a cabin on a hilltop in a very remote area of West Virginia. And like I literally, and there's been like Sasquatch, you know, myth in the area and UFOs. It's known for UFO sightings, right? And I will go out there like at midnight walking my dogs, you know, in the woods. And yeah, I just am not like easily scared. But since you asked that question, I know, yeah. Well, because I don't want to gross people out. And there's only one child, but that's... we're ready for the. We're listen. If you, it, our audience loves to be yeah. grossed out. And it's, it's Bracken McLeod's child, so yeah. you should hear how, <laughs> oh, you should hear how he talks about him. So you're good. He's conditioned. I mean. You know, I remember being in, uh, I was doing grad uh, writing program, graduate writing program while I was working full time and telling people, you know, like when you go into work and they're cutting both people's, both their hands off, thousands of people in Sierra Leone. I don't know if you remember that from the 1990s, but, um, you know, like you, you see the man's inhumanity to man every day for real. It's really hard to be scared of made up things. But as a horror writer, I understand the need for facing your fears in various formats. So anyway, when you asked me this question, like how would I be more, like enhance the scariness of a particular situation? Um, I, you know, I had an answer and went right out of my stupid little head. You were talking I, about vulnerability so and-, Don't call it and finding things that scare you and in, in, uh, connecting with that in a book. Yes. It was really smart. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, okay. Very good. Try really hard. Ex-CIA, oh, well, we very all, smart. <laughs> we were all talking about this on an earlier panel, and I think that is because horror writing, everyone has something they're afraid of, right? But we're conditioned not to reveal it, to protect that secret. And so, but horror writers have to confront that. You know, we are confronting our darkest fears and figuring out how to go through it. And I think that's one reason why horror writers are kind of like really good people to hang around with, because we can't lie about it. We have to be in touch with those fears. And, and I think not everyone wants to be challenged to really confront their fears, but if you want Except for to, the people who email us, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> you'll, you'll find it in a horror novel. So that's, that's one of the things that I think, why some people find horror so comforting, because it lets them get close to their specific fear and explore it and examine it. I can't remember who said it. I probably said this on the podcast before. But there's some... Um, there's Quoting some smart person named Bria Ooh, Grant. I, and, and, but it's some horror filmmaker said that we don't um, create the horror. We show it back to people. And I feel like that's... I, I'm butchering this. You already, someone knows who it is. Is that Wes Craven? Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Wes Craven. Okay. Wes Craven. Thank you. All these nerds up here. Yeah, look at these uh, nerds. Steven, yeah. I feel like you had a response. You were going to answer this uh, question. Oh, yeah. How to make it scary. You know... I think you can weaponize your own mind against yourself. Like oh when, boy. You, when you're going, <laughs> say you're going for a job interview and you tell yourself, if I can catch that elevator by the time it, before it closes, then I'll probably have a good interview. That kind of, we all play those little games, those little magical thinking games. Before you open a book, if you say, if you, 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 you give yourself five words, like the and red and house and hair and shoe, and tell yourself, if I see those words, five times at the bottom right corner of a page, then something bad's gonna happen to someone I love. Oh my you know? God. Never make that? Steven mad, what? ever. That 
For sure. I love that though. That was really, so scary. <laughs> you really someone can psych yourself out. You know, we had, we had someone write in with a tip for this that I really liked was to try to find books with a protagonist that's like you. Mm. You know, it's very easy to be like, oh, well, like if I read a book that was like about a, a you know, a teenage boy, you know, I, I don't, I, it might not be as easy for me to put myself in that situation. But I remember the very first time I read the Clive Barker short story, Dread, and I was like, oh no, a bookish vegetarian white girl gets trapped. <laughs> and I was, it was like so much She's scarier. wearing black lipstick. Oh, she <laughs> loves in black clothing. She's, 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 she's wearing glasses. <laughs> but it, because, and it, 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 I mean, that whole short story collection, like I had to take that, that, I mean, I think I read one short story of Books of Blood a month because it was, I mean, it was so, it's so, so scary and such a great collection. But that one in particular has always stuck with me because I immediately was like, oh, it's me. I'm the one being, I mean, sure. spoiler alert for this very old, old story, but I'm the one being trapped in a room with a side of roast beef, which doesn't sound scary, but it is. <laughs> and it really, so this person was like, try to find a book, uh, you know, to, whoever you are, try to find a protagonist that is, is like you, and it's so much easier to put yourself in the situation, it's so much easier to get scared. But this is, what he said is far darker than what you said. Because oh, what sure. he's saying, I feel like I just got a glimpse into your brain, which was that you're just playing mind games with yourself all the time. I've never played a game where I looked at an elevator and said this oh, interview. I do, you don't do, I do that stuff all the time. This is called, this is called anxiety. Yeah, can, can Clay yeah. nice with, I want to switch seats with Clay. I'm Bree Grant. I'm not mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> A healthy human, what can I say? <laughs> but I, I do that stuff all the time, you, and I can see. The elevator closes, you're going to have a good interview. I have I have those two, these, like, uh, um, uh, like luck things, things that I'm yeah. like, oh, so be, that's this would be something. Bad luck things. This would be, uh, I think you could psych yourself into a situation where something was scarier than maybe it originally was. Yeah, I can see that with a book, too, especially. Especially if you're like, if this happens in this book, this something bad's going to happen to me. That's sure. actually, it's so much darker than I feel like just lighting it like a spooky candle, you know? <laughs> it's harder to read by a spooky candle, though. And you know what? I wonder if you could really do, can... if you can't find a book that you're interested in with the same... Um, a protagonist that's like you. I wonder if you could do the same thing with your situation. Like, if you're like, I don't want to read a haunted house book. I live in a condo. Like haunted condo. Yeah. Like Less the book that scary. I just read. Uh, well, I bet. I wonder if you could find a book that w the situation was th was sure, similar sure. to yours. Yeah. Yeah. Clay, you have something to say? I have questions. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, me too. <laughs> I, I, okay. So how far an can elevator we go? and an interview. Go ahead. How far can we? Go with this because it, it seemed like. Oh the, no! The, no 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 no! Well, the, the the presentation was that I am jaded. I've read all there is yeah. under the sun. There are no stories that scare me. How do I get scared? So my question is, how far do we as panelists take the 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 notion of Go jump in the like, deep end? Like, we friend, don't care. Like because like because Wait. I love the bathtub idea. Like I love I, uh. you know, and I love the door open. Like the like. Back to the you door. You combine them all. Yeah, Fill the bathtub with blood. But, but, Open the door. I mean, shut the light off. I, I, but I, I feel like the sensory experience, like a, a book is a very intimate thing. You are you are engaging with the book and it's just you. You could be in a room with other people. You could be in, in bed next to someone. But like ultimately, it's just you and the book. So what if you uh, have a love triangle? Like you bring someone else into the book and it becomes like a, a sensory... Reading glasses after dark. Wait, wait. Well... I don't understand. No, no, okay. Well, let's play with this. Okay. Like, all right. So there's the idea of like, I, I want to read this book, uh, but I can't read this book because I am blindfolded. And oh, okay. I have someone, I don't want to do the audio book because I feel an audio book is like. We love no, an no, audio no, no, book. Because like an audio book is like, it's done. But like if. Hog tie if, yourself. If Turn on the like, audio book. <laughs> no, but if like someone was like, I'm, I'm reading the, like. I like Paul's blindfolded. Okay. Stay away, and, stay away from this me. This is so I, kinky. And I like have the book, and I'm reading the Someone's book a to photo Paul. Of this? And it's 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 the, like I mean Paul could pick Paul's the book sweating. if he wants, but it is, but it is the idea of like I'm reading you the scary like, and I'm reading it to you, <laughs> like the dude's you're, you're bird saying, boxing me right now. I don't like <laughs> bird box. Creating sleep no more for reading. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Uh huh. The, it, so the, you need to hire a thespian to come into your home. Frighten you. <laughs> yeah. If, I mean, if it was a stranger, that would even, I mean, God, can you imagine? Can you task like, rabbit this? <laughs> <laughs> like, think about it. I am at home alone. Dear Craigslist. I have hired somebody <laughs> to come to my house. 
I am blindfolded. I have what? not seen who this person <laughs> is. I have opened I the door. I like the door is locked, yeah. like Definitely. unlocked. <laughs> they come in. Sure. I am in a chair in the living room. I think I was blindfolded. At this movie. The I book is there. I think we've just hit a kink of Claire. <laughs> <laughs> like, hold out. No, this, oh, is good. Oh, oh, oh. this is good, this is good. It's experiential yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. But, but Grady Hendrix already does that. If you order any of his books, <laughs> he will volunteer to come over to your house and do what? that stuff. So. Okay, what well, service? let's go even further. I wonder if you could set something up like that for yourself, not in like a David Carradine way, mm -hmm. but in like a, is that inappropriate for the, oh Just my keep God. going, keep going, don't, don't. keep going, keep going. <laughs> wait, wait. Oh yeah. Why did we not do that? I don't know if it's up or down. I think it's up. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Like if you could like set an alarm on, like close your eyes and set an alarm on your phone so you don't know when it's gonna go off. So it'll start uh -huh, yeah, okay. Something like a that. Countdown. I wonder if you could manufacture those kind of, cause nothing, nothing's worse than when, I mean, or good if you're a sick freak like us, than when you're reading a book and like something outside of your control surprises you. Like a bird sure. hits the window. So, I'm sorry? I live in the <laughs> mountains now. Okay, okay. You know, my cat knocks something over. Okay. Um, the oven dings. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of less weird things now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I wonder if you could manufacture that kind of stuff a fear, for a you. fear kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Rachel, how much? Child you? runs by. What? Um, you have anything? Are you are you a Halloweeny or are you? Uh, <laughs> the line five has been chili? crossed. So you really can go wherever at this point. <laughs> Well, I would like the Clay McLeod Chapman <laughs> horror experience. I'd try that out. Yeah, how much does will, that cost? I will hire myself. I will read you any book that you want. And, I will come, and what price? I will come cost? to your place. Pick the book. Uh, you no, wait, not just your books. Any I book? will say, that's a very high maximum fun tier, OK? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. A $25 a month tier gets you Clay to come to your house and knock on your, your windows. House. Any book. Any book. It doesn't have to be a scary book. Well, it could become weirder. a scary that book. That gets weirder. That gets weirder. Don't, don't offer that, Clay. Do you cookbooks. <laughs> a lot of book freaks out here. Um, I'm kind of like, do less. Like, I think if you put in the work to be like, well, it's really hard to scare me, so I have to create these ambiance. It puts all this pressure. And then I feel like if you're not feeling it, it's worse than if you just kind of go into it with an open mind and zero expectations and then kind of allow the book to do the work and strip it back. Um, it's like, you know, if you go out to like a really nice restaurant and you get all dressed up and then the food's not good, you're more disappointed than You don't want to go home with that book. Yeah, yeah you know what yeah, I mean? Uh -huh. I, I know exactly yeah. what you mean. And actually another thing, Alma, that you and I were talking about is that even if, I, I do want to point out that even if you are a, as we say on the show, a five chili horror reader, it's okay. No, the, I mean, we love, I mean, we, I love getting scared by a horror book, but even if you aren't getting scared, there's a lot that horror has to offer besides a cheap thrill. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I, it, even if you are, if you're a horror reader and you're getting frustrated because you're not getting scared, maybe you're paying attention to the wrong things in the yeah. book yeah. and you just need to let yourself get lost in the book a little bit more and appreciate it for the story, appreciate it for the characters. Um, and maybe, uh, it sounds like, horror reader therapy, but maybe the scares will come. You <laughs> take you less pressure. Relax, relax but I think, into it, you know? <laughs> Rachel, I think you're right in taking less well, pressure off yourself because when you're focused, when all you can think about is being scared, like if you're watching a horror movie and you're like, okay, well, when's the next scare gonna come? You're not even paying attention to the movie. Right. You're just paying attention to, you know, little cues and you're kind of taking your, you're taking yourself out of the experience. And for all you know, you could be reading along enjoying yourself, and all of a sudden Clay comes up behind you and starts <laughs> reading, <laughs> reading over your shoulder, <laughs> heavy breathing. It, it's a good idea. I wanna... Uh, listen, I, I think, I think we you should, got something with this. We should workshop this, If this develop author it, thing doesn't think, work out for you, I feel like there's some sort of like Craigslist thing in your future. I think oh you God. can really make this happen. Reading glasses presents. <laughs> uh, let's build an app. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It'll, all right, um, well, so what about for the opposite, which is a, a thing we also get emailed about quite a bit, is people saying, you know, I love reading glasses, I love listening to you both, you're both big horror people, and I hear you talk about all these We great like books. to compliment ourselves first, we're like, we we're love so you, great. you're the best, and then also a question. Uh, <laughs> but they're, they're so interested in books like all of these authors, but they're, Hall they're Halloweenies, as we like to call, they're people who have, maybe they don't have a lot of experience with the horror genre, they get very easily scared, and uh, they don't know, you know, they, they wanna, they don't know how to start. What is your advice for the other way around? making a horror book less scary, reading it in a field of puppies, you know, <laughs> not having Clay come to your house. You know, how, if you are, I mean, Paul, you said you were very easily scared, so what, do you just read in a, in a, in a meadow at noon? 
No, I mean, I don't read in a meadow. I, I wish I had a meadow. I mean, you are, you're a full-time author now. I mean, you could go read in a meadow whatever you want. Yeah. How about a, a bathtub in a meadow? Yeah. Oh, yeah, let's Sounds. shoot for the moon, baby. That's a Cialis commercial. I, that is a Cialis commercial, sorry. Um, I would just say, for the quote-unquote Halloweenies, like, I, I'm not going to shame you. Um, I want you. Like, you are the re you are the reason. I think you are the secret, like, number one horror readers. Like, you just need to find the one book that you connect with. We, I don't know. I want readers who are affected. Like, if, if readers are reading it and they're not affected emotionally uh, or terrified, no. So I'm not going to help you. I, you just have to. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you. Paul Drebley says book. no. <laughs> I will say, like I said, like, don't read right before you go to sleep, maybe. Like, like if, you're, if you're easily scared, like right before the light goes out and then you're not sure what the shade or the shape on the ceiling looks like. I mean, <laughs> don't do that. Read, read a little bit earlier, but do it. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Do, do it. it. <laughs> do it. It's Halloween time. Do it. All right, what, what about everybody else? Is there any advice for Halloweenies out there? I have a weird tip that I just came up with recently because okay. I... Um, has anyone here seen the show Marianne? Oh, Don't. yeah, I have. Actually, do, please. The but French is, show? Yeah, French yeah. one. It is the oh, first so show good. that was ever so scary to me that it's I couldn't scary. watch it. Yeah, and it's I had so to hide scary. my head under a blanket and I had my boyfriend explain to me in very minute detail what was happening on screen and but the other night um I someone had tweeted a picture of it and then I was like cool this is going to be seared on the back of my brain all night while I'm trying to sleep and I just imagined her eating a bag of flaming hot Cheetos <laughs> and for some reason it broke the spell yeah 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 uh, and I've been using that ever since. It's like I, picturing a crowd naked kind of thing. Yeah. I don't, but this, I feel like there's tonight. a lot of things in horror things, horror books that we don't want to see naked. So the Cheetos work better for me. I see, I see. It's just the vulnerable. There's something vulnerable about seeing someone eating hot Cheetos. Yeah, because they, you know, they can't messy. do anything with their fingers. Yeah, of course, of course. They can't touch anything. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just it's <laughs> they so can if they do if they touch their eyes, their eyes, their eyes will feel bad. <laughs> it just it's so it's such a silly thing. Uh, I talked. I've been talking nonstop about how I just read the new Grady Hendrix, which I wish he was here. Uh, he uh, in this this new book, we're all big Grady Hendrix fans, and uh, How to Sell a Haunted House, which is obviously very specifically made for me. But it's so scary, and there are content warnings, puppet stuff, and I kept thinking about that, and I was like, what if they were just eating Cheetos, though? <laughs> and they're so much less scary. So that's my new tip for Great. myself. Eating Cheetos. I would, you know, to a person unfamiliar with horror, I would tell them best way for them to get through a horror novel uninjured is to read to the end of every chapter and then put the book down. If you stop in the middle of the chapter, then you don't know what's going to happen. And so then your mind opens up after you close the book. But if you wait until the end of a chapter, you can probably find a, not, not a stopping point, but a place you can step off for a moment. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, that's true. And with movies too. Like, you know, I feel like there are movies when as a kid I imagined what they were about. And that was far scarier than when I actually got I to see I remember, them. so the first time I ever encountered the movie The Exorcist, I didn't see it, I heard it. Yeah. And that is not a movie you want to hear in an empty house, let, yeah. me, tell you let me tell you folks. But, yeah, but as horror authors, I guess you are, you're coming to some sort of stopping place at the end of every chapter, for the most Unless part. Unless you're a sick freak, and I'm looking at all of you. <laughs> <laughs> and at the very end of the book, obviously, you finish the book, and you know what happened to these people, so your imagination can't run wild. I think that's good advice. Although, I mean, if you write the horror novel right, then the ending bleeds out into the world. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I think what we're saying here is that whether, never, doesn't matter what end of the chilly spectrum you are, if, if you are a person who wants to read horror but you're really scared, or a person who loves horror and desperately wants to be scared, maybe it's not the scares you should be focusing on. Like Paul, you said, you know, you want those affected readers. I always say like, I am, I mean, I'm a huge horror fanatic and I still get so scared at horror movies. I, I have a yeah, trick same. where I put my glasses down on my nose <laughs> so it looks like I'm still watching, but I can't see. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I'm proud, you know, I'm really proud of that because I love the fact that I can still, you know, year, like decades into being a horror freak, I can still find myself immersed and terrified. So maybe instead of trying to figure out what is going to scare me, what is not going to scare me, you should just be trying to focus on this book and focus on this good story. Mm. And um, I mean, and you can always put it down. I mean, you don't have to put it in the freezer or bury it in your backyard. Right. But, you know, you can... 
you as can. you said, take a stopping break. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is like the best time to be reading horror. And one thing I say all the time is it's like a really big tent right now. You're going to see things that go all the way from, you know, just a little bit of suggestion or something all the way to like really in-depth, full-blown. You can just find so many great stories out there if you just start dipping your toe in. But I think what happens a lot when people who don't know the genre, they just assume it's one kind of story and that's not for them. And, you know, they're not really doing the investigation. So, like, one thing I'll say is my historical horror novels are often called, like, not super creepy, not not super scary. So it's, it's, that might be a good gateway. We actually do well, recommend your books quite a bit. Do. For that. <laughs> we do. We do enter. What do you think people assume they're getting, though, when they're reading horror? What do you think that they're... What do you think people are like, I don't read it because it's going to just be... Creepy dolls or something. Like, what do you think well, people are... I think sometimes creepy dolls, though. It is sometimes creepy. <laughs> yeah, we can go there with Grady Hendrix. Mm -hmm. But um, I think a lot of people think of it like splatter punk. They just yeah. think of it as super violent things that they've seen in movie trailers. Mm -hmm. And that they think the books are like that, too. And the thing is, is, you know, there's a lot of books right now that um, some people might... They get classified, actually, a lot of psychological suspense or something like that. They're serial killer books, blah, blah, blah. But if they were movies, they'd be horror movies. And they're reading horror now, and they don't know it. Surprise! The book is already Surprise. in the house. <laughs> you know, I, I always feel like people who are afraid to read horror, they're not afraid of what's on the page or on the screen. They're afraid of what this can activate in their own minds, you know? And, or how they're going to be perceived as yeah. a reader. Yeah, exactly. But, like... You know, some people talk about horror as a roller coaster. It's a safe, it's a thrilling ride, but you get the safety bar, so you're not actually in danger. I think there actually is danger in horror. I think you can read a book that reprograms you, and you come out differently. And the people who are afraid of horror are really just validating the horror dynamic, I think. Yeah, they're reading things that are actually scary to them mm -hmm. deep down. It's bringing out something in them. I feel like you have something to say. I have a question. Okay. Um, I love you so much. <laughs> no, I just want to get... I, Is I, it going to get weird? No, no, no. no, <laughs> Do, no yes. Do we need a no, content no, warning? No, 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 it's not going to get weird. It's good, but I just... I love Halloweenies. And, like, I, I want to add... Like, I just want to go back to the question. Can you repeat the question? Because I feel like if, if the person is saying... Oh, oh. I'm a reader, and I like to read horror, but I'm too scared to read horror. No, they're like, saying that I want to dip my toe in that creepy oh, murder. They're, they're, they're like, I want to do this horror thing. Because I think there are so many people who are big readers, and there is, it is such a great time for horror right now in, in, in fiction, in novels, and I think there's a lot of people who are like, I want to read horror, but I'm scared of most things, and yeah. I, they don't know where to begin. Well, I mean... If it's a matter of like where where do you dip your toe in, um, that's one thing. I mean, like, okay, I have two I have two bad ideas, and I'm not going to advocate for. These Are you going to bring people out to a meadow full no, of no, 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 This is, I mean, like, I'm, and, and give them a hug while they read. I mean, we could read it to them in <laughs> another <laughs> funny voice, like, and then Jack Torrance said, like, I don't know, in a funny it, voice, in a funny voice. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. That's not no, that's not my suggestion. Okay. I'm taking that back. But this is bad. But. Could you have someone else read it first, and I then have great. and have them be like, "All right, this." Joining a book club is a great idea for this, yeah. and maybe what you do is you just you're a month behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just, and you're like, cool. All these people have read that. All these people that I know and love, or maybe just like have read this thing before me, and then they can get... I mean, Bria does this with me with snakes and love triangles. It's true. I'll read books and go, just don't pick it up. You're not going to like it. I, I, or it's just going to bother her enough to where I know... To or tell I know, her or like the book, you know, the, uh, the, the book I was talking about tonight, um, the one that, um, that ruined my life in the best way. But huge trigger warnings for dog death, which I know yeah. is a thing for you, so... Have some, having friends is a great thing. And I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad having friends is a great thing. Great and thing. that's what we can all walk away with learning from this. The real horror books podcast. is the friends we made along the way. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm glad that you brought up horror being a big tent right now because I think uh, you know, really now is the greatest time for horror. And there's a lot of people who want to be part of it. And I think I, I, I encounter people all the time who are like, oh, you're a horror reader. And there's this idea that horror is some sort of a lesser genre, it's sort of a juvenile thing. Um, and there's a lot of people out there who are trying to, who, who want to change that and want to get into it. I mean, like, Rachel has a new book out that I'm completely obsessed with called Such Sharp Teeth, and it is, a, it's very scary, and it is a lady werewolf book, so I'm obviously obsessed with it. But it's also, like, 
one of the greatest books about struggling to like come to terms with the expectations of femininity that I've ever read. And there's a, I can see why people would want to be like, okay, well, yeah, there might be someone getting eaten, but I, I want to be all like all the books that uh, are written by the people here, um, sold in the in the room behind us. Um, this, you know, some of the best stories, and I'm not ta talking like oh just genre stories, just horror stuff. Some of the best literature, and I'm using that word very intentionally, mm. that is being written right now yeah. is horror. I agree. And I can see why people would want to get in on that. And, get uh, in on it. Get on this trend. It's great. I've had too much wine. I have nothing One to of say. Us. Um, One of us. Wait, Rachel, we haven't heard from you. What, 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 Clay, wait. And also, I think you're a second yeah, idea. I kind of want to hear your second idea. Clay? Oh, it's so stupid. No, no, no so we're stupid. here for it. I was, I, I just said, like, wake up before everybody else does. If you go to bed afraid, I'm, if you don't want to read the book before you go to bed because wake you're scared up. of what you're going to... Wake gonna, up early. Wake up early and read it. Early bird then. eats the horror. Yeah. <laughs> that that kind of leads into what I was saying, was, like, have a palate cleanser. Like, it's kind of easy to take yourself out of it, like if you're reading a horror book before bed and it scares you, like put on a comedy podcast for a little oh, bit. Yeah. Like there's oh, always a really ways good idea. to like redirect your energy. And so, I mean, sometimes you're gonna read something scary and it's gonna stick with you, but I think that's exciting because it's sticking with you for a reason and mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to investigate like, why is this scaring me so much? Mm. And that's good. That's part of the joy of horror. So um, I think, don't. Your horror is not broken if it's scary. Yeah, don't be you. afraid of the fear because it might teach you something. Um, but if not, put on a comedy podcast. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, okay. No, no, no. But can you can you call a friend at each chapter? You finish the chapter and you call a friend and you tell them what you just read. Okay. Like it's like that's why you get married. <laughs> so we've no, talked on the show. No, the whole no, point I, of getting in a relationship I, is so you can give your partner a crappy summary of what you're, what you're reading. I, I feel like it has to be someone outside of the physical proximity of you. Why? Like I, Clay is still monetizing this problem. <laughs> <laughs> call Clay. Clay. One eight hundred. Call a Clay. One eight hundred. Call a Clay. I would. Yeah, but I mean, like, I, oh my God, Rachel, I just read, you know. Such sharp. She, I'm at chapter three, and like this just happened. And it Rachel would be like, help. "Oh, you know, like, like it's like you just talk it out." I think you that you call the author directly, and we'll tell that's you. Good. Yeah, yeah, no. that's, that's good. We've there had an go. episode about this. Do not contact the author directly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Do not tweet at them at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I, I think a tweet at two o'clock in the morning if is it's okay. Nice, okay. To be like, this is <laughs> scaring me. Yeah, but I, actually, I think that's a great thing because. Uh, when you start doing that, I think you, because you, horror is so physical, you know, and you start sweating and you start, you're, you know, you're, you're really feeling it in your body. And when you move into that space, I feel like you start to move into an analytical space where you're like, oh, well, this thing happened. You start to think about, well, why is this character doing that? And you're sort of taking yourself, you're rising yourself above the book a little bit and trying to figure it out instead of being in the physical horror a little bit. Yeah, it's a way of looking for the zipper on the monster suit. Yes, that's mm. the perfect analogy. Yeah. That's great. Mallory, we forgot to tell people at the beginning that they can ask questions at the end, right? Think about we really good questions. Alex, you have anybody? The um, world's you, finest horror, horror authors you here. Can do, you can ask anything, but there is a little microphone set up, I think, that we can do that. Can we do that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Boom. We want to do that because we think that would be fun. So prepare, the, prepare thy questions. And do we yes. need to play Sarah Gailey's thing? Oh, my God. We forgot to play Sarah Gailey's thing. No, we didn't. Thing. We paid half of it. All right, someone, cue the, cue the gaily. Cue it. Cue the gaily. <laughs> Next one is for oh, the person who laughing. wants to do the opposite. Want, it gets too scared every time they read. And this person says, what should I do? I miss my scary books, but I also enjoy being able to sleep well at night without freaking out. You know, I take the same approach to kind of defanging a scary book that I do to defanging a scary movie. When I'm watching a movie that I know is very scary, I did this when I watched... Um, Midsommar recently because I knew that this movie was going to have a big emotional impact on me, but I also needed to be functional. And so I watched it with someone else and we paused it frequently to talk about what was happening on the screen and to say, you know, wow, that scene was really effective for these reasons and kind of pulling 
the sense of appreciation of media from the visceral fear of sort of the, the middle of your brain, the amygdala part where a fear response lives, up into your frontal cortex where you think about and analyze things makes it so that you, you're not removing yourself from the appreciation of the media, you're actually still really embedded in it, but you're appreciating it from a craft perspective, you're analyzing and narrativizing the effect that it had on you. It's a really good way to bring yourself down a little bit, bring the adrenaline and emotion down. Um, I also find that in addition to like those frequent breaks and sharing it in movies, I love doing this with books. I love having my spooky friends who I can text passages from a book that really frightened me. Oh. Or sitting Same. next to my partner, I'm a spooky I tend to friend. put my feet in her lap and I'll be reading the book and she'll see me going like this. And if she knows that I'm not looking to really get like dragged down into the fear part of the experience, she'll go, ooh, what's happening now? Tell me, oh, is that guy coming up again? Is, is he got a big chainsaw? What's the scary thing that's happening? I find both of those things really helpful. The last tip is have a snack. It is so hard to be really scared if you're eating gummy bears um, <laughs> and having them nearby so that you can just stress eat your way through this book is going to make it a lot easier of an experience unless the author does something evil like what I like to do in my unpleasant books, which is pulling in a delicious treat and making it unsettling. <laughs> but you won't know until you try. I like that phone a friend has become our like... We need to Phone start friend. a reading glasses app. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is Although too that scary. Is the, God, that is the app I've always wanted. Like, screw Tinder. I want an app that matches me with someone who just finished the same book. That I did. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> so we can discuss. Yes, uh, that's good. That'd be the greatest. But I do think, I, I kind of like the idea of having a snack, but the silliest snack that you can imagine. Okay. What is it? Uh, Let's go down. Panel. Gummy sharks. Panel. The silliest snack you can imagine. Please go. Clay, I know you have an answer. <laughs> Please. I was reading a book recently, and I had dry cinnamon toast crunch, and I was just, just like with oh, my... Sticking it to your tongue. You can't... Like have, a beautiful you can't snowflake. You can cinnamon <laughs> fingers when you're reading, so yes. I was just... And Sticky. there's something about that like little like lizard blank <laughs> motion that kind of it's great silly so, snack. Yeah, silly so snack. the snack itself wasn't silly, but how I was eating it was pretty. I'm gonna argue that uh, dried, very tiny, fake pieces of toast are silly. Yep. That's very silly. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> wow. These are horror. Y'all are very serious. Sorry, okay. I'm like so brain weird. Um, are you talking about a? Fake silly food. You know what? Real you can make open. one up you if can, you want. Yeah, yeah, you can do anything you want. Candied eel, maybe. Oh my god. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry, I'm half dead. Similar to gummy we, shark uh, in the same family. I think um, that's your next book. I think we found found uh, oh, something. Man. Or, <laughs> or candied octopus, maybe. Candied octopus. So I'd try it. I'm interested. Pop rocks. Oh, oh my very god. Very silly snack. Silly. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna say live goldfish, but that's not. That oh, funny. Uh, you can't uh, eat that and read at the same time. Uh, similar cereal. I just thought booberry. Like I don't believe booberry is real. Booberry is could. very a very silly cereal. That's a funny one. Do you know what that is, Mallory? Is it? Are you too young for booberry cereal? Nobody is too young. No, for I think booberry. it was in the eighties. Was it past? It's still around. It's still it's, it's still, still around. around. Count Chocula too. Fr yeah, so. fruit brute. What? They all get one except for creature. It's Count Chocula, Blueberry, and what? And the mummy one. Frankenberry. Fr oh, Frankenberry, Frankenberry, Fruit Brute. None for the creature from the Black uh, Lagoon, though. All right, all right. Steven? Um, silliest food I ever had was 33 years ago. High school girlfriend, she asked, I was at her house, she asked if I wanted nachos, and I said, sure. She goes into the kitchen for about three minutes and comes back out with a plate of Cheetos she'd melted cheese slices on top of. <laughs> Can I have what her number? Mallory? <laughs> <laughs> is she still single? <laughs> but, I mean, that's two votes for Cheetos, folks. Wow, Keep track wow. here. Cheetos. Keep track. Sponsor us. Okay, so what happens, though, where we've talked about creating this atmosphere. What are the books that would do this for us? We're going to do two. So what whole... whole Table, what is the scariest book that you've ever read first? The Girl Next Door, Jack Ketchum. Nice. All right, so this is really embarrassing. I'm forgetting the author's last name, but his first name is Grover, 
and it's called, oh, no. there's a monster at the end of this book. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> it's like, you're, you're turning the page and I don't want to turn the page. And it's like, <laughs> you, you wrecked like his beautiful brick wall. It's like, oh no, am I the monster? <laughs> and you just, it's so like, you're so inside your own head. Parents but they are end, loving this joke. It's, <laughs> Finally, something kid friendly on the show. <laughs> cute Fuzzy Grover. Uh, Sarah Grand's Come Closer, as Stephen described earlier, that book changes your brain. Yeah, yeah. Um, survivor type by Stephen King, the short yeah. story. I just, that doesn't It's not a book, Clay. That's not That's a book, a, Clay. No, 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 no. It's, in a, it's in a book, though. <laughs> it counts. It counts. I just wanted to yell at Clay. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to yell at Clay. I'm trying, guys. No, I, so like I explained, I'm really hard to scare, and I can't remember an old one, but I just read one recently that I'm We're like, tied. asked to blurb. Grady Hendrix is how to sell a haunted all right. house. Folks, when I tell you this will ruin your life, you will love it. <laughs> right, could you expect Grady, oh, it's gonna be, you know, clever and witty and, but it was scary. And I tell you, I am not scared of a lot of stuff and I'm sitting in one room in our little cabin on the, and I hear the scritching. We don't oh, even no. have a freaking doll in the house. And I'm like, cause yep. it's puppets and dolls. And I'm like, what the? And then I thought, oh yeah. my God, I'm scared. Imagine reading it when you live with someone who plays Warhammer, okay? <laughs> Horrible. Um, this is a generic answer, but it's an honest one, which is Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. Good one. Yeah. Bria, what is the scariest, like, what, if you had to pick one book? Um, one book. One, one book to rule them all. Um, I think it's that book, Hex. It's a recent book yeah. by, Thomas. yes. Like yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, yeah, it's very scary. I don't know why it scared me so bad. Something about the witch. Being in people's houses, really apps, me very scary apps. apps. So scared of apps. Uh, what about you? <sighs> Some of them might be by, written by people I on know, this I panel. Was, I know. Uh, so if I have to pick, sorry, folks, you know I'm going to do it. It's the Red Tree by Caitlin Kiernan. Yeah, but you do oh my God! Book. I feel like Caitlin Kiernan should start paying me because yeah. I talk about this book so much. <laughs> but I love it. It really, really frightened me. I yeah. haunted house book gets me every single time. Yeah. Okay, mm. flipping. You're talking to a Halloweeny. One of these gentle golden retriever people come. Up. Paul Tremblay comes up to you, <laughs> and he says, "I really want to get into horror." For all the people in the audience that might not be into it, ha what's a good book? The gateway that drug of horror books. Oh crap! Wait, cue the gaily. <laughs> I like that you think they were like ready oh, to yeah, go. So hard, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were. Oh, ruining lemonade for me, by the by. <laughs> I made it a goal going in, and every time someone says I'll never look at lemonade the same way again, I feel like a god. Country time is gonna come for you. <laughs> uh, all right, second to last question. Uh, recommend the scariest book that you have ever read. Gotta be the Twisted Ones by T. Kingfisher. Oh, this is good. No doubt in my mind. <clears throat> Mallory has heard me talk about this probably a hundred times. It is the first book I ever read that had legitimate jump scares in it, things that like made me really startle and have a physical adrenaline rush. Um, and at one point I was reading this book, this is where I learned the have your back to a door trick that did not do it on purpose. But I had my back to the front door of my house and I was reading my book and my partner came in from work and opened the door oh, and I screamed at the top of my lungs. And you know, she of course is like, hey, what? Um, but it just, I just turned around and I held the book up and I said, the book, and she got it. Um, that book remains one of my peak reading horror experiences of all time. Okay, question again. Paul Tremblay comes to you with his lovely puppy dog eyes and he says, <laughs> what book is a good book? Not, ne not necessarily a super scary book, but a great intro horror book. Oh, Henry James, Turn of the Screw. Okay. Ooh. Okay. All right. What would I give to myself? <laughs> Go ahead. Somebody oh, somebody else. Paul's still thinking. Things Have Only Gotten Worse by Eric LaRocca. I'm just kidding. I mean, it's a wonderful, <laughs> that's a, an amazing novella and a collection of stories, but I would not give that to a horror newbie yeah, necessarily. Too scary. Although maybe I would, because that's mm. what Paul Tremblay would do. You okay. think I'm like, <laughs> wow. this puppy dog the nice dark guy. side. Yeah, no, I have Paul's to think of my side. real answer. Sorry, somebody else. Okay, okay. Scary stories to tell in the 
dark? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Aww. like... Those are really scary, though. But that's that's where I start. That was, yeah. like, my... Yeah, and now like, look, you're... Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we gotta... I mean, my grandfather taught me how to swim by pushing me into the deep end of the pool. And I feel like... We've learned so much about you. Now, folks. I feel I'm like sorry. we really got to know you here. He blindfolded me. He said, the, the water's out there somewhere. Just walk straight. Yikes. Um, so I think there's a number of things. One is there's been a lot of great anthologies, horror anthologies, mm. that have come out in the last few years. And they're bite-sized. And I find that a lot of them are much more filled with, like, um, you know, sympathy for the monster and sympathy for the devil, and that those are those are good introduction. Um, Cackle by Rachel Harris I agree, is I agree. really transformative. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, she's got a very unique view. It's not super scary, but it opens your eyes to the possibilities out there with things that we're taught to be afraid of. And then um, a classic is The Little Stranger by Sarah Water, Ooh, which is yeah, we'll as good. much or more historical fiction. It really opened my eyes when I found out she actually wrote it as historical fiction, and she added the supernatural element huh. afterwards when she thought it wasn't. But that oh. that is like really a completely different way of looking at the haunted house story, and, and I, I think it's just genius and very light touch on the horror. Um... You have two, A Cosmology of Monsters by Sean Hamill, and um, You're the Witching by Alexis Henderson. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you're the Witching is a little bit more, I'd say, like dark fantasy bend, um, but they're both just incredible books, and they they have some scares, but it's not too intense. And I feel like uh, fantasy is good for people to fantasy is an it's a, that's a bit of a gateway drug for yeah. horror because you can you can like the you know magical aspects of it and then if it's a little bit scary maybe it's a little bit easier to to swallow. yeah that's not my world so yeah, yeah. Can, yeah 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 I like the genre blending idea of mm -hmm. like giving someone that's a little bit horror but also a little bit something else mm -hmm. slowly lure them in mm -hmm. yes what do you what do you think Bria what uh, would, no, yeah, oh. Oh, so I would, oh. for my real answers I would add to go back to Shirley Jackson something like you know that might be horror adjacent like. We have always lived in the castle. That's what oh, that's I was going to say. Maybe good. some of her short stories, because I would know that they would not be able to help themselves and have to go then read mm. The Haunting of Hill House. Uh, yeah. A more recent example, uh, I, this book, I find myself thinking about it at times, is The Loney. Um, Ooh, yeah. I'm sorry, I am actually forgetting his, his Andrew name. Andrew. Andrew Hurley. Uh, Andrew Caleb Hurley. Uh, anyway, The Loney is, you, you don't, yeah. it's hard to pinpoint like why exactly this is, weird or creepy or, or, or horrific, but it just, it's, it slowly sort of sneaks up on you by the end. The cormorant is kind of like that too. Yeah, I love the cormorant yeah. too, yeah. Um, the Residence, I think it's called, by Andrew Piper. Ooh. It's historical, it's about a president and how the White House got haunted, and it's actually Ooh. so beautifully written. It came out a few years ago. What do you think, Bria? Yeah, I was thinking of older books too. I was thinking Rebecca or something like that. It's oh, not quite, yeah. it's like horror-esque enough to where, I mean, there's darkness in it and there's obviously, you know, there's thing, bad things happen, but there's something about it being written not currently that is a little less intense. So I was thinking something like that. What are you gonna say, Shirley Jackson? Oh, I'm a sick freak and I'm gonna say, mostly just because I wanna talk about this book with all of you, have any of you read The Nest? By Kenneth Oppel. Isn't that a very scary book? It's Mallory, a it's the middle grade. <laughs> Someone in the audience is going, no way. They're going, no way. They say, no way for a child. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Are you going up or down? Oh, okay, sad. This is sad. <laughs> this was a denied, a denied suggestion. <laughs> Sorry, Mallory. No. Shut down. <laughs> So I no. just really wanted to talk about this book with, I can't believe, oh my God. It is a middle grade book that will annihilate you. I will buy a copy <laughs> for all of you. Um, I would actually say Mexican Gothic by Silvia Oh, that's a great Garcia, one. Because that's it's a, a buzzy book right now and it has a lot of other elements. It's a historical book. There's a romance element. There's like a big cool house. There's like a lot of, cool, I mean, there's scary mushroom horror. Sporer. Sporer, as we now call it. Yep. But there's so many other elements and there's a buzzy book and there's, it's such a big part of the conversation of what horror can do right now mm -hmm. that I feel like it, that book is an, a fantastic example of like why people should be into horror right now and why they should give it a chance yeah um okay 
We're gonna take questions, yeah? We're gonna take questions. You can make them about horror. You, you can can't be anything. weirder than any of the people on this panel. <laughs> if anybody has a question, please there's come a, to this microphone. Come on we'll over. We're excited. We're hoping there's some glassers here. Want to say some things? Hello. I am a glasser. Woo! Woo -hoo! So my question is, uh, jump scares are really easy to create in movies, but they're extremely difficult to do in books. Yeah. And what I'm wondering is, is there anything that's reversed? It's really easy to do in a book, but is very difficult to do on the big screen. Interiors, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what did you say, yeah. sorry? Interiors. Oh, like people, what people are thinking. Yeah. yeah. That's very true. I feel like, and that's one of the problems with translating, making books into movies, is that you end up with these great characters in books and then you see them in movies and you don't actually know what they're thinking about. That's a really good answer. Um, just to ask the question, uh, to your question, um, have, you, have you read Cabin at the End of the World? I have a recent Halloween convert. Yeah. Oh, Halloween convert. I, Welcome. I, good job. There, I, I, I was speaking on another panel earlier today and we were talking about jump scares in books and I feel like that has a jump scare. Oh. And uh, uh, Adam Neville's um, Cunning Folk also, like they're, they're literary jump scares that are really kind of amazing. I've threatened with my editor and publisher because my books have increasingly demanded weirder interior design. Like my most recent book has like red handwritten notes in the margins and my editor really wasn't happy with that. And I said, I promise this is it. But it's like, so the, cool. She said, you have to promise that's it. I was like, well, the next book has pop-up pages <laughs> and holograms, you know, because I, I do want sure. a jump scare. Why not? The next yeah. one you need those cool 3D glasses to look at. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to, like, stare at the back of the Teddy Grahams box for, for, like, 30 seconds. Or one of those, like, uh, magic eye things. Yeah. Oh, that's what you're talking about, where you, like, stare at it long enough so And then you see a, a Teddy Grahams surfing. It's, yeah, <laughs> I remember those. That'd be a good snack, Teddy Grahams. Teddy hey! Grahams, that's a really silly snack. Unless you're reading the creepy doll book, then maybe not. What was the snack where you dunk, oh, dunk dunkaroos. dunkaroos. <laughs> the funniest Answer thing question. that I have ever heard Bria Grant ask Sean, our, our, our sound engineer, who is from Australia, He's was Australian. do they have dunkaroos in Australia? Because they're kangaroos. <laughs> I was like, is that racist? <laughs> What else? What do you feel like is, I mean, some of your books have been optioned, some have been made into movies. Do you feel like there are things that like, or, or any other, buddy, you know, other books that have been made into things that things were not captured well into the movie space? Have y'all seen a movie? Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna give an obnoxious answer, like all of it. Like, cause yeah. I mean, for me, like the, the fun party question is like name a, movie or TV show that's better than the book, and it's a really short list. It's very and hard. If, if I, I have a movie so. that ever comes out and you put that on your list, I'm coming to your house. <laughs> Clay's coming Clay. to your I'm house. He's going to read the book. And we're going to mess up your stuff. Can, um, can we call you out? I mean, because you have a movie coming that's out, right? right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you seen it? No, no. <laughs> Do you want to tell people what it is? We, we do have a lot, a big line of question askers oh. right now. Yeah. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I wasn't looking up. I'm so sorry. You're in the Please you're, go. You're, you're in mood lighting. It's hard to see. Yeah, sorry. Very romantic Hi. looking. Hi. My name is Danielle. Hello. Hello. Are she, her. I'm a glasser. Hi. I'm actually one of the mods of the reading glasses. Oh, Danielle! Oh, you're a, you're an here. American hero. <laughs> wow. I'm here with another mod, Rihanna. Hey. We're here together. Hey. Hey. All right. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Oh, we love it. We love the we love the podcast. So thank you for doing it. Um, my question is in line with horror being such a broad genre. Um, the emotion of fear is also a very broad feeling with a lot of like sub feelings in it. Um, for example, when I read horror, I like to be unsettled, but I don't like to be disgusted. Mm. Um, I was wondering when you all read horror in your own free time, is there a particular feeling that you're pursuing or a feeling that you're trying to avoid? What, are, what flavor notes are we going for? <laughs> I like dread. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Dreadhead. Uh, so that's what I look for in my horror. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I like to, I think I'm the opposite kind of reader. I like, to, I like to go in expecting to feel X and then feel Y and Z instead. Yeah, I'd say I really try not to go in with expectations. 
Because to me, that's the magic of finding something that maybe you weren't expecting. Um, like, I don't know, for a horror book especially, like, to me, I, I like imagining the book or the story is describing sort of an emotion that's obviously dread-related or fear-related, but the only way to describe that emotion is that entire 300 pages. Yeah. I'll echo dread. But it's the, it's the idea of like once the book is over and you're walking away from the book, that the real, that's when the, the imagination takes over and you're, you're suddenly kind of like, oh, that's what the book is doing to me and whatever that feeling is. Yeah, horror, it lays dark eggs in your head and they hatch at three in the morning, you know? <laughs> this is probably not a good thing to admit, but I like trying to convey a really complex emotion that is common to most people, but it's hard to elicit especially in the written word. And it usually involves some component of self-shame, like uh, something you know you shouldn't like, but whatever, right? And pe but people don't like that in a book. They don't want complex, right? They want something big and whatever. So now I've just discouraged all of you from reading my books. No, no. no. You know, we love the, self -shame. This is a glass for audience. <laughs> They're big fans. I would say I love a dawning horror, like a slow creeping. Like nothing makes me happier because I'm a extremely horny for research is when someone's like at the library and they get a piece of information and all of a sudden that piece of information changes all the things that they thought had happened. Uh, I'm not going to spoil any books, but a great example is a movie that I, one of my favorite movies from last year called The Night House. Um, and you find, you go, basically you go through the whole movie thinking something is one way and you get a piece of information and you realize very slowly over the course of a minute it is the other way, and I love that, like, <gasps> the very slow, oh, crap, is like my, that is my catnip. I yeah. love that. Yeah, that, that reverse cascade falling through your head is yeah. really wonderful. Yeah. You start to look at all the things yeah. that have happened yeah. in a totally different light, and it's terrifying. Yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Aren't you glad we brought the slide whistles? Oh, you know, yeah. Traveled from LA with the I slide was, whistles. It was fun going through TSA with that. I was like, I wonder if they're going to check my back. <laughs> Should we take another question? Well, Bria, what's your favorite kind? Of, what's your favorite flavor note? Oh, 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 um, you know, I just read this book called *The Measure*. Have you all read that yet? That book is amazing, and it's sci-fi, but it it has enough dread in it. But it um. I, it made me realize that one thing I really like is when I can't stop thinking about what these people are going to do in this situation. And I don't know what that's called. Worry. Empathy? Um, worry. Okay. You, you get, Bria loves to be worried. I she get loves concerned. and hates to be I, extremely I, concerned about someone. She wants to go pick them up from the mall. You know what? And that's how I live my whole life. I'm constantly concerned about what is going on with everyone else. That's pretty you did bring me lunch today. I did bring me lunch. Making, I was going to make sure I ate. Hey. Hey. Hi, um, I'm Gus. I, we know. I wrote yes. this, the book that made <laughs> Please, all of you, buy this book because you know I'm going to be, I will not stop talking about it on the show for the next, like, yeah. three months. I ruined Mallory's life. Uh, <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so thank my, you for ruining Mallory's life. My question is, like, we've got some uh, horror heavy hitters up there. What's a book that's made you cry? <gasps> oh. Uh, Paul Bear's Club. <laughs> I was a sobbing mess at the end of that. So it's... That's, um, Jeez, thank you. I can't rave enough about that book, and That's it'll cool. entertain you and break your heart. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm crying isn't like the highest accolade. It's like that, holy shit, I wish I could write a book like this, and that was the Paul Bearer's Club. Wow. Stop it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bearer's Club was pretty amazing, wow. man. Wow. Wow. Doesn't, say, doesn't say so on Goodreads. Uh, <laughs> who I have cares? To say, to fair, uh, I know. The Only Good Thank Indians you, was also like, just one of those books when I finished reading was like, shit, that's such a good book. I wish I had, could write something like that. Sorry, you're getting a slide whistle for the S word. Oh, you're not supposed to swear. Oh, man. So, please, let's, we can edit the <laughs> slide, slide whistle, whistle over the, the S word <laughs> and, and the one that so I already said. It's very hard. Said. We've all done very well, I just want to say. We deserve a pat on the back. Me especially, <laughs> Mallory man, especially. I, want, I, I deserve flaming Hot Cheetos for this. Um, there's been a few... Covered in cheese. <laughs> I'm going to try that. I cannot wait. Um, I, there's, there's been quite a few. I will, 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 I'll turn this around on the, on the table and say Cackle by uh, Rachel Harrison. Nice. Oh, it, yeah. I think we it's all, nice. it's the same thing with, with, um, with what makes you scared. There's certain things that will make me cry. Mm. Like family stuff won't do it, but 
best friend friend stuff yeah will really get me um and uh yeah that that book uh, i'm that book made me tear up and then i immediately made my best friend read it oh okay throw, i'll throw two out there continuing the embarrassing people on on the stage but an earlier work of stevens uh, lead feather which mm -hmm. i would highly recommend that you find um i found that incredibly emotional uh and partly because i was really jealous that he had some awesome basketball scenes in that book <laughs> um with only good indian uh I was more like, because I know Steve, and I was like, Stephen, get off the ladder. No, <laughs> oh, don't God. do that. Um, and I'm going to throw out one more book, because it was a different kind of tears, not like friendship happy tears. This was like, I've never been so devastated and depressed in my life tears. Uh, a Prayer for the Dying by Stuart Onan. That, that book will gut you and show you your guts and rub it in your face <laughs> and rub it in your face until your eyes tear up and you start crying. Mm. That's how I describe the experience of reading A Prayer for the Dying by Stuart Onan. Five stars. <laughs> you know, the, I think, did any of y'all read that nonfiction book, Beautiful Boy, about the dad? It's a dad writing about his son getting hooked on meth. That book no. broke my heart in all no. kinds of ways because my kids were the same age as his kid when his kid got on meth, and it just oh. really got to me. Yeah, I mean, it was the same, same thing we were talking about, finding something that you really personally relate mm -hmm. to will completely emotionally obliterate you. Uh, I, I mean, I will say, Gus, wherever you are, <laughs> That is your real name. <laughs> <laughs> that book, because that this book is very um, the. It, it's all about a, a relationship, uh -huh. and uh, I'm trying really hard not to spoil any part of it. But that's again, family won't get me, but like friendship stuff, and th that book is all about a marriage, mm -hmm. and. Um, it's very, uh, that book was hard to read on a play because I was like, I gotta call my boyfriend and tell him <laughs> I love him. So that 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 it, it really got me. So thank you. I'm serious though. Five stars. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out the measure again. Y'all gotta check out this book. I think the author's name. I really I read on a Kindle, so I never know anyone's name. But I, I, it's Nikki Ehrlich. I was trying to remember it, and it's great. And it did make me cry on a plane. On a plane. It's very emotional. It's about we both cried on planes. I, I talked about it in a couple shows ago, but everyone gets a string delivered to their house, and the string tells you how much longer you're gonna live. And so you take it from there, and like what that means for these people. It's sci-fi, but it's, it's great. Should we take another question? Yes. We have a long line. We gotta okay, crank we'll through roll these. through. All oh, right, nice. so I am a former librarian. Hey! Woo! Thank you, and thank Mallory, you. And Mallory Kenneth Opal's The Nest is definitely worth everyone <laughs> uh, to, to read. I will is, personally mail you each a copy. Okay. It is, there's no way that a fifth grader should read that book, oh but God. it is, uh, it terrified me. All the other the thing is, um, being a librarian, a lot of times people are very ambivalent to read horror. And one of the books that I have recommended to slowly put their foot in the water is Elevation by Stephen King. It's less than 200 pages and it is phenomenal. It's not super Wonderful. horror, but it helps you to get into the Stephen King mind. And it's a not place where we all want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, um, we talk a lot about what scares us in horror. Now, one of the things that I read not too long ago was Michelle McNamara's book about the Golden State Good Killer. Good Lord. And it scared the crap out of me I... being home alone at night. I'd like to know from each of you what nonfiction books scared you. I I'm going to just second that. Can you believe I listened to that audiobook in the shower? It was, that was like the wildest idiot. thing you've ever done. And I tried to watch the show, and I, I couldn't sleep at night, so I had to. I couldn't watch the show. They made a show out of the out of the book, and you made it But that, um, yeah, that that book scared me so badly. I, yeah, I will second that book. Anybody else have nonfiction? Yeah, um, you know Douglas Preston of Preston and Child. He wrote a oh, he wrote a nonfiction cool. book about going to South America. I forget what it's called, but he talks about a a bug that bites you and you get leishmaniasis. Oh God! That really. No, thank you. I'm still quite nervous about that. It really scared me. <laughs> uh, to keep on the Stuart Onan love, uh, he wrote a nonfiction book that took place in Connecticut <gasps> uh, called The Circus Fire. Yeah. And it is his only nonfiction book? I, I it was so. at that point, I so. yeah. Yeah, um, I, 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 yeah I'm for blanking on where in Connecticut, but it is about a circus fire. And it is the, the, the pace and patience in which he writes about these things 
in the midst of a circus fire, and I mean, I've never. You're talking about a fire at a circus. At a, yeah, the, Mallory, the, the, you should you know, book you we're, we're in a tent. I, don't, I like circuses. I don't want them on fire. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a terrifying book. Yeah, I'll co-sign that one. I would say the hot zone, but I'm too afraid to read it. <laughs> so you just think that's the scariest book you oh, would I've, read I've if you read, read it. about the hot zone. I will not read. <laughs> I've it. read the Wikipedia scary. entry. It was too scary. <laughs> too scary. But no, circus fire is great. Absolutely. Y'all have any nonfiction? I feel like my answer is too depressing. I was thinking of Truth and Beauty by Ann Patchett. It was like a friendship book, and mm -hmm. that is yeah. Very sad. So, but it's not horror. That's, but okay. that's like the scariest thing. Horror is to lose mind. somebody <laughs> that you love, and that's a beautiful book. So, but. I hope you have a fun one because... <laughs> no, again, I'm reluctant to say anything because I'm such a freaking... Because the government won't let her say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I've been to Fort Detrick, right? I've been in the places where they keep... Yeah. Area 51? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Area 51? No. 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 Tell I'm not gonna, us I'm not the secrets. Ask you Can I'm I tell you the... I'm not going to ask you the question. I'm expecting, like, a dart to be... <laughs> I, I do want to say, weird Marvel guy who was sitting behind me while we were landing <laughs> into JFK, he said, I like f when we land into California places so much better, because when you're flying over California, you can see all the secret places. Wait, <laughs> to who did he say this? To whom? Out loud. Yeah. And I was like, do I chance getting stuck in a conversation with this man to know more about Honestly, it? Honestly, it would have been fun no, to hear about. The answer was no, because yeah. I was very tired. Let's bring him out. <laughs> <laughs> now he is Marvel Man. Come on out. <laughs> but I can, I'm, I'm going to be thinking about that forever. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. Hello. Hello. Um, so I would definitely classify myself as more of a Halloween mm -hmm. than a hardcore horror fan. Okay. All are welcome water, here. Water, thank you. I'm also a water person and a glasser. Um, so I'm wondering if you have any watery, scary books to recommend. Funny, you should say. Yeah, 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 that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> dun, da, da, da. The Deep by Alma Katsu. Yeah, I really oh. cannot recommend that book enough. Actually, I so, think we've so recommended scary. The Deep a few times for people who are looking to get into horror because it's an incredible horror novel, but it's also like a, an immaculately researched historical oh. book. The but characters it's been retired, are sorry. It's been retired. No, I got in there before it got We could also say In the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant is a good one. What's that one by Nick Cutter? Oh. The Troop? No, not The Troop. No, I know what you're talking about. It's a red cover. Yeah. It's so, it's scary. Maybe, I think it's The Deep. It might be The Deep, yeah. Just search The Deep, and I'm sure there's so many people who want a horror book you can find. It's really scary. Yeah. Our Wives Under the Sea by Julia Oh, my God! Yeah, it's not like straight up like yeah. core but it's very subtle and beautifully written so, so and it's very watery i've been describing it as if annihilation was only about the marriage part oh wow uh, thank you wives, I, I haven't read it since oh. about the summer really it's, it's about um a woman whose wife is a marine biologist and she comes back from a trip in a submarine that was supposed to take three weeks and they were gone for six months and her wife has come back and she might not be the same. Um, Did you want to be a marine biologist as a kid? That seems like something No, I'm you terrified would... of the ocean. Like, oh, okay. That seems like what you would have said as a kid. No, well, I wanted to be Steve Irwin. Okay, fine. Land stuff. <laughs> I don't, I don't, me and the ocean. You don't get along? No. I, I'm from New England. I was bred to fear the ocean, I got it. okay? okay Fine. Yeah, New yeah. England. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Scared of the ocean. Oh, no, no ocean, please. Yes. Good water books. Hi. Um, I'm somebody who's solidly five chilies, but like they're very small chilies and okay. a bit of a baby to it. Okay. And it's kind of an open-ended question. As like somebody who struggled with like anxiety, depression, OCD also like lives as a woman in this world, is like married to a person of color, is like deeply concerned about the environment. Like how do you find a place between like life being the most scary thing <laughs> and like sort of creating a fantasy world, which is scary. Like where do you find that, that point in between with like mental illness and like much it sucks to be alive in this world. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, like, where is that balance? Honestly, what's funny is that I think that 
part of the reason why we're having such an incredible horror time right now, besides mm -hmm. the fact that a lot of people that historically have not been, you know, as welcome in the publishing industry, the doors are opening a little bit right now, is the fact that we live in hell, you know, is the <laughs> fact that we live in a nightmare because horror is so cathartic. You know, I, I, I get, my, one of my favorite comedians, his name is Chris Fleming, and he says that watching horror movies is like taking his anxiety to the dog park. Because <laughs> it's true, and even if a book is dealing with those problems, there's so much solace for me in the fact that it, oh God, I can't swear, that it freaking ends. You know, and that it will take you through, most books will take you through that cycle. Um, but I think you, you do your research, you know, read Ring Shout, you know, which is about killing racists. like. Which, like, there's so many, there's so many books that can deal with those things, but in a way that is not where you're seeing sexual assault on the page. You know, we said Bree and I just got a load of arcs, and they had from Ir Irwan books, and they okay. had, um, God, it was I can't remember the name of the book. content De warning or something on the desert, desert something, but it had all the content warnings. Books are starting to to um, list those. There's a lot of websites. That, that list content warnings, you can ask people. Um, there, there's a way to do it, and I really do feel um, that the way to deal with those things is to read horror, which sounds completely counterintuitive, but it is, for me, the most cathartic thing. I've been reading a ton of horror in the past few years. But you don't have to. You can read, I love a magical food book. I love a <laughs> romance. Like, I can really get behind a romance. And, and you know, if you read those books, they're gonna end up at a happy place. And there is something nice about knowing that at the end of this book, this, these people are going to get together. They're gonna like each they're other. They're gonna eat magical food. They're gonna eat this food, and this food's gonna do something amazing for them. I don't know what it is, but I, that, 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 there is something for me that I can kind of, I mean, I will obviously, like, I spend a lot of time in the genre world, but I, I definitely, talk, there are times where I'm like, I just want to read about someone going to like a pho restaurant and falling in love, you know? <laughs> Which literally is a real my, book. <laughs> it's on my book right now. It's on my Kindle right now. <laughs> Y'all have any advice? I think maybe who you read is, is also helpful. I always, there's like go-to authors that like I, it, you know, I, I feel like I, there, there's comfort and solace in a familiar voice or a voice that you gravitate towards. So, you know, whoever your favorite authors are, um, I don't know, I find solace in, in them. I would say really briefly, you know, I think for some of, some of us, not all horror fans, but like for me in particular, like I, I, don't, I don't need like it has to end and, and sort of be resolved. Like for me, it's about me as the reader and the writer have this shared recognition that something is terribly wrong. And I find something really hopeful in just that act of communication. You know, even if it doesn't get resolved, even if it's gonna, you know, not get better. Just the idea that, you know, someone else, oh, they see the same thing that I'm seeing. They see that something's terribly wrong. Um, at the very beginning of the pandemic, like most people, I couldn't do anything. I was supposed to read books for blurbs and I couldn't do it. I was supposed to write stuff. And the thing that helped me break out of it was I reread Peter Straub's The Throat. And I sort of laughed because it was definitely not like a cheery, happy book. But it, it, it helped me actually self-discover, like people ask you, why do you read? Like, I don't read to escape. I read to be who I am. And this is just who, what I happen to read, you know, that makes me feel like myself, so. Paul, yeah. you didn't help me in my pandemic experience because I read Survivor so I actually think it did yeah. help me. I no, read it, I I read it towards read the beginning. And I felt like it was, I read it alone in a park and there was like people six feet away, like not many people. And I feel like it was actually very um, cathartic to read that book. Yeah, but no, it, it is wonderful to read a book and, and feel that feeling of, I'm not such a weirdo. Somebody else feels this way, thinks these things. That's really, it's comforting in a weird way. Yeah. No, I, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, obviously, we're weirdos. But I, I, I find that maybe because horror is not always taken as seriously, that there, there's a lot more freedom in the horror genre than there might be in other genres. You can do the weird, messed up stuff, and people are like, oh, well, it's a horror novel. Like, you can get violent, <laughs> you can get gory, you can, you can, I mean, people are, there was a question earlier, Some, uh, I think it was on your panel, Clay, where someone was like, why are horror people so nice? Why are they not weird? They're it's because nice. they get it all out on the page. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I <laughs> Sorry. Fade into the mic, Sorry. Paul. I was saying it for Stephen's case. Uh, most of it. <laughs> but, you uh, know, that, it can also be dangerous. I remember when I read Truman Capote's In Cold Blood, one of the two axe murderers, his name Perry, 
And I identified with him so much, I was like, that dude thinks right, you know? But, um, <laughs> what? But then you learn it's not good to kill people yeah. with an axe. Uh, I learned you don't get caught. Don't get caught. <laughs> wow. Wow. We've learned so much on this panel tonight, I feel like. We really have. Probably time for like one more. One more. Okay. Okay, I just have a comment on the nonfiction scary. Please. Um, there was a circus fire in Hartford in the 1940s, 1944. Yeah, and many people died, and there was one little girl they never could identify, and no one claimed her. And um, there was something in the news recently about uh, they made some kind of progress on identifying her finally, I think. But an, another twist of the story is that my mother and uh, family members had tickets to the circus that day. <gasps> And um, is this your short, short story that you're reading to us? <laughs> no, no this, is, this is true, nonfiction. And, and um, my brothers were little toddlers. And my mother finally decided, well, it was just too hot to go that day. Oh, So they just, God. you know, didn't use their tickets. And they didn't go and they lived. But it would have been horrible. People were, were stuck in the, in the circus tent with the fire. Wait, who was this little girl? You don't know. They just, there's been news, but we don't we know We actually what it is. hired this person, so now none of you And here she is, sleep. out with the Marvel man, <laughs> the little girl from the Circus Fire. It's okay. She works for Clay. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it, it's a first employee. I, I would, if you have not read The Circus Fire by Stuart Onan, I might probably not recommend it to you, ma'am, for, for the reasons that it seems like it hits so close to home. But, yeah. like, I, I mean, the experience of reading it is so immersive that I, uh, and, it, and it deals with tragedy in this way that is, I, I don't know, it is, yeah. yeah. But I mean, Stuart is such, I would say, he's such a humane writer. All his books, you know, there's such empathy, a deep well of humanity and empathy in his writing. You know, it's certainly not exploitative in the least. Um, yeah, so, like, I, I he, you know, it, I remember in the book they talked about The Missing Girl, but obviously that book was published, I think, in the early 2000s, so yeah. anything that's out new is not in that book. Wow. All right, we're out of questions. We're at the end here. Does anyone have any final thoughts about encouraging people to read horror, welcoming people into the horror community? Tell us what you're reading that's good. Can we read to them? Uh, <laughs> Clay, I'm going to need you to see yourself out. <laughs> And tell us what uh, you're reading that's good. Give sure. us a good horror wreck. I'll go super quick. So a piece of advice we always get to horror writers is don't just read horror, read other genres. Great. I would flip it for other people. Like, you know, you should be trying to read everything. Like, yeah. you're, you're missing out on a little bit of experience. Even if, you know, even if you're terrified of it, like I said, I think maybe embrace that. You don't have to do it every week, every month, or even every six months. You know, I think, you know, it's worth the, the dip in. Um, I'm going to give you a preview of, of, a, of a book that I, I got an early read of. And you know when you get to age fifty one, um, you think like you've read your you, like your top five favorite books list is set in stone. You get at a certain age, right? Uh, so I read Mariana Enriquez's um, *Our Shade of Night*. Oh it's my God! I pre-ordered that. <laughs> and that's one of my favorite books that I've ever read. So definitely keep an eye out for that one when it hits in February. Very cool. Oh, Ghost Eaters. I claim oh, okay. it comes out. Well, great. We, ha we have uh, every person on this panel either just had a book came come out oh. or is about to ha have a book come out. We have Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel, which comes out October fourth. October fourth, Lady Werewolf book. Like, what else do you need? Fervor just came out in the su the summer. Uh, came out in April. Oh my God, wow. so good. Thanks. Ghost Eaters comes out in two weeks. Spore wow, folks. Wow, wow, wow. Paul, Paul Bearers came out this summer. You can get it right now. Obviously, you don't need to hear me and Bria talk about it anymore. We're obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And this comes out, what, next year in Febu uh, February? Don't Fear the Reaper, sequel to My Heart is a Chainsaw. Big Glasser favorite mm -hmm. from last year. Fantastic. Oh, and what a sexy cover that is. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can either pre-order or if they're out now, you can buy them in the store behind us. Uh, you can buy my books. You can buy Bria's book, Mary. We're going to do, if if anyone here wants to sign, Bria and I will definitely be signing if you want to come up, get something signed. We'll sign a tote bag. We'll sign a shirt. We'll sign books, whatever you want. And just want to come up and say hi and tell us what your wheelhouse is. Yeah, let us um, know. We are really, really uh, appreciative of all of you. And just one last thing, me getting 
Stappy. Thank you to the Westport Library. None yeah. of us would be able to do what we do so without nice. the library. This is incredible festival. There's a lot of amazing people who work really hard to make this happen and bring it to you for free, mm -hmm. which is absolutely fantastic. Thank you to all of you, Glassers. We have the greatest listener community. We have the greatest readers, obviously. We're extremely biased about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, what other fans are like cool with slide whistles and, right. and yell yes. at And make sure you don't recommend the nest to people who are too <laughs> scared of it. Thank you for thank you for rating me in, because God, I love that book. Uh, and th yeah, thank you all for coming out. We know that it's weird to get back into the world after the pandemic. Uh, and, you know, we're all trying to remember like how to wear pants again and stuff. So we really appreciate you uh, coming out and supporting us. It means a lot. Thank you. Bye.